Hello, and welcome to my new series on speculative evolution. This is a xenobiology project set on an Earth-like alien planet and beginning at an era equivalent to Earth's Cambrian explosion. In this episode, we'll be outlining two clades that will play major roles in the future of life in this project. I would like to mention that the focus of this series is on art and creature design rather than hard science, though there will hopefully be some realism to it, and that this series is intended for an audience that already has some knowledge of the speculative evolution genre. With that said, let's begin. Marine snow is the shower of organic materials falling from upper waters to the ocean floor, and both clades will initially feed upon this resource, or upon others that eat it. Our first group is inspired by echinoderms, the phylum that includes species such as starfish, sea urchins, and sea cucumbers. And due to this inspiration, I'll be calling the clade Echinomorpha. With an internal skeleton made of interlocking calcium carbonate ossicles, 16 flexible limbs, and a respiratory and circulatory system which makes use of blue-tinted, copper-based blood, they will quickly reach large sizes and be among the first predators of this planet's early seas, although many species may maintain a benthic bottom feeder niche. On their back is a ring of feather-like gills, below which is a primitive heart. In the center of the gill ring is a gonopore. This clade employs broadcast spawning, a method of reproduction that involves the release of many gametes into the water column, where the gametes' contact and fertilization occurs externally. Due to this technique being highly unreliable, some species in this clade may have begun actively seeking out mates, which increases their chances of reproduction. Echinomorpha larvae will spend their early lives as zooplankton, until they have reached large enough sizes to settle on the sea floor. Depending on the species, some Echinomorpha's skin is partially covered in calcium carbonate scales, and a structure analogous to what in Echinoderms is called pedicillaria. Starfish are believed to use pedicillaria to deter parasites, and some sea urchins have adapted their pedicillaria for feeding. On the end of Echinomorpha's limbs are patches of photoreceptive cells that are used as primitive eyes, allowing them to see their prey. To consume larger animals, some species can regurgitate their stomachs for external digestion, much like a starfish, until their prey can be swallowed whole. Echinomorpha will prove a powerful presence in our planet's early seas, but will soon be challenged by this project's second clade. Initially Echinomorpha's prey, this group was defined as burrowers of the seabed, eating whatever detritus they could find beneath the sand. These lifeforms are inspired by Earth's polychaete worms, and will have converged on a body plan similar to some arthropods, long, segmented bodies with exoskeletons, each segment bearing two pairs of legs, with a gill between each leg. Unlike arthropods, this clade has iron-based blood that allows for efficient oxygen transfer throughout the body. The frontmost segments have merged into a head, in which lies a mouth, four primitive eyes, four antennae, and a gonopore. Unlike Echinomorpha's mouth, which is comprised of a simple gang of muscle, this animal has complex jaws, with a pair of mandibles, flexible pincers, and a vertical set of mouth parts. Their reproductive organ is located below the mouth, and due to being relatively fast moving, this clay doesn't employ broadcast spawning. In the same fashion as Echinomorpha, I will call this clade Polymorpha, referring to the polychaete worms of Earth. Rather than crawling across the sea floor, many of these species have begun to swim by beating their legs for simple propulsion. It may not be long before this mobility allows them to turn the tables on their former predators. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, hit that like button. And if you want to see more, please consider subscribing. It's free and you can always change your mind. In the next episodes, I shall be exploring several other notable clades, as well as the planet on which this takes place.